Oh, you just caught me here, mixing my supplements from Chemical Warfare. Obviously, because we're doing this beginner series, I think it makes sense to do a little beginner uh, supplement feature, really. So, I've broke it down to be as standard as possible. We've got a nice pre here. This is actually the new pre from Chemical Warfare. It's a little bit of a mixture with uh, an energy and a pump. Sometimes I like to use a standalone pump as opposed to a stim. A lot of people like that. This one's a bit of a blend. This is actually the new um, affordable pre from Chemical Warfare. There's two flavors, there's blood orange and there's the blue raspberry. I normally like blue raspberry, but I actually like the blood orange in this one. So we've got a good standard pre, 15 to 20 minutes before you train, bit more energy, bit more pump, bit more focus. Then moving on to an intra, a good EAA, BCAA mix. And then we've got some other intra workout stuff in there that will benefit you like electrolytes and pump products. And then again, super simple, post-workout protein. Obviously you can add carbohydrates for that for recovery after training, but that's a nice simple beginner stack, pre, intra, post. Also another good tried and tested supplement is creatine that I like we increase in strength. So what I normally do is I actually just mix my pre and my intra at the same time with some creatine and I'll also add some carb to that. But obviously I'm not a beginner, so. I'm not scared of getting too massive. So I'm gonna mix all that up and it's Monday. So obviously, universal chest day, we're gonna hit some chest and or biceps. And biceps, not all biceps. <laughs> Dylan, you son of a bitch. Dylan, you son of a bitch. Watch Predator. That's your homework this week, to watch Predator. My dad knows what Predator is. That's my dad in background. Camera's there, wave at it. Now. <laughs> one, two, three, four. I declare a form war. Look at this. Oh, he's got. Oh, tag nah, team. that don't count. Ta Lyndon's the fucking gym champion of form war. Feel free to come and, <laughs> come and take that crown. So. Did the chalk, did it chalk? Chalk. Yeah. Did it puff? Puff, daddy. <laughs> so we're going to do chest today. I don't know whether I'm in the camera right now, but it'll be funny if I'm not. We're just pondering what to do for chest today. Just kidding, we're flat benching, obviously. Probably a good, all right, firstly, I want to apologize for my voice and breathing for today, because I'm still not very well. Weren't very well all last week. We were supposed to film legs last week and I forgot and Lyndon turned up and I felt very bad. So we're probably going to film that Saturday, maybe. Depends whether Lyndon can take some time out of his busy schedule to come and do legs <laughs> with me. Uh, so we're going to do chest today. Start with flat bench. Obviously flat bench gets a bit of a bad rap for being the ultimate injury exercise. Sounds hypocritical of me because I did tear my pec flat benching. However, I don't think we should all be quick to blame the flat bench. Because um, there were other factors involved as to why I tore my pec when I did it. Um, rushing through different periods of training, um, trying to blend powerlifting with bodybuilding. So bodybuilding form, I dare say, like elbows out, um, but doing low reps, like one rep maxes for a powerlifter and then in general, like, bodybuilders look for quite a lot of failure and fatigue with training, whereas powerlif powerlifters do the opposite. It's a more like repetition of weight, in increasing strength. So, it was 2014, I tore my pec, just from being a bit stupid in, in a number of other ways, but I still think flat bench is a very, very good exercise that when utilised properly, it definitely can yield a lot of good all-round pushing muscle and strength. So obviously we're going to warm up properly. The warm up's going to be very similar to the shoulder warm up because obviously push, shoulders and chest are both pushing very similar. So we'll do a good round of like shoulder warming up and then we'll make sure we get some good blood flow going in the chest with cable flies and very light bench. Then we'll move on to some heavier bench down to sort of six reps. So, so funny. funny. Oh no, I'm so excited. So excited. So, so excited. funny. <laughs> yeah, so, sounds the same. <laughs> So excited. <laughs> um, I'm all right for a set or two. <laughs> Thanks, though. Have you got like spot PTSD now where you're like, I must help him at all times? Previously on Boars, two men. What a fucking treacherous spot. Well, fucking jump in, give a brother a spot. So Lyndon's got a bit of a wider grip than me. That's not a problem. I've got quite short arms. So I go a bit narrower. But his form's really good. Chest up, elbows in a little bit. Sort of touching the bar on the lower line of your chest. 
I've never liked people like taking the weight off for me because then they lift the weight off and then when you take the weight I like to feel the weight when I get it off because I get like a better a, feel, a better feel for it but someone pulling it back on for you definitely makes sense so it's the same plan but now the the plan is to actually stick to it yeah. okay <laughs> Can you remember that time you rang me and asked me, asked me whether Meat Castles is open on a Thursday? Eliza was sat next to me, and as soon as I put that phone down, she went, That's not on his fucking plan. <laughs> Do you know what? Like, for me, when I'm in a growing phase, I've got a basic diet, but if I want to eat something outside of that diet, I will just eat it. Like, unless it gets to a point where you're having, like, yeah, a handful of off-plan meals per week and then you have a look at yourself and you're like, I've put 15 pound on and I'm out of shit. Obviously that's a problem, but you, you should in theory be able to be like, I can sensibly eat off-plan without causing significant problems. Like a Chinese. A few donuts. Which would sort donuts? Peasant donuts, yeah, they're the best. <laughs> yeah, where from? Yeah, oh my God, Morrison's. Yeah. Leave that bit in, I'll pay for it. In fact, leave this bit in again, because we might owe Morrison's double money. Because I filled up at Morrison's once, and when I went into the petrol station, I'd put like, I always try and put exactly 40 quid in or whatever. So it's like 39.99 and this girl's like 44 summer and I were like, no. She were like, oh, it's already been paid yours. And the person outside had paid for my fuel. So I just left. So I'll pay for that as well, if they get unhappy about it. What Morrison's were it? <laughs> Morrison's Wales. <laughs> Come and get me, bruh. I like Morrison's. I like. I do like cheap donuts. It either has to be Krispy Kreme or cheap. I'm not a fan of Dunkin'. Yeah. Coffee and donuts, you absolute pig. I mean, copper, not pig, pig. That'd be offensive. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm fine with it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do a warm up in background. Mate, you're supposed to be beginner in this video. You're looking like an absolute little pro. Like little warm-up flies with plates, I like it. I know what you're thinking. The floor, I know. <laughs> Oof. I wonder who put that down. Oof. Yeah, us. Yeah, so me and Linda got matching rip stra wrist straps, so when we put the floor down, we look like some American floor laying extraordinaire team. Yeah. And then when Drew lays half floor down the island it's on video, it just like, <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah, Were you yeah. upset about the way that came out? Yeah, yeah, because, because, yeah. What are you saying? I can't tell what you're saying. I can just hear you mumbling background. My back! Oh, why's my back hurt? Might go and get a foam roller. You ready for five? Yeah. So we want like a good solid ten on this. Come on then, good solid ten. Good reps, really good. Lyndon's actually already got really good form on bench press, which I haven't really had much input on. But what we wanna do basically is, a lot of people call it like retracting a scapula, but I think saying that to most people is a bit stupid really, but it's basically like chest up, um, elbows in a little bit because we don't want too much stress on the shoulder joint, which like I mentioned before, I think is how I actually tore my pec, or was a big contributing factor. So elbows in a little bit, chest up, feet planted, nice and controlled to the bottom of the chest, drive up and squeeze. Again, we're gonna keep the reps up around the six area. We're not gonna go lower than that. We're gonna be working up to a top heavy set and the heavy set is technically gonna have a rep or two in reserve. So we're not taking the heaviest set to the risky failure point either. And then we'll do a back off set where we will go to failure on that. Let's put some weight on this bitch. <laughs> yeah, we've gotta be sensible. 
which is our middle name. Lyndon Sensible Slater, Drew Sensible Walk. So this is my first warm-up set, as you can see, significantly heavier than Lyndon's. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tell them that. Don't bring attention to that point. Yeah, but I'm old. <laughs> Christine, yeah. That's a young Nanan name. Yeah, that's more like a mum's name. How old are you now? <laughs> old enough to be a Nan. <laughs> right, so we're going to pull it down to fives and sixes now. So, go six. One, good. Two, good. So the point of doing build-up sets like this with reps in reserve <coughs> is so that Lyndon can acclimatise up towards what he's going to do for his heaviest weight, but not waste too much energy and cause too much fatigue with the lighter weight. And also get a, a decent amount of volume throughout the session. So obviously he already knows what he's roughly planning on doing for his top set which is a very good idea, you should do that. You should have an idea of what you're going to do because then that gives you an idea of the increments of weight as you're going up to that. So that's where tracking your lifts, especially on a com one compound lift per session like this, that's a very good idea to track. That's a beginner tip, track. Track your shit. And a, or an 80 kilo bench is effectively gonna be an 80 kilo bench wherever you go, whereas you're completely right, like, Number five on one pec deck is not going to be the same as number five on another pec deck. So yeah, I, I would just track a good, a good compound. Did that camera come with one mic? But then you can't buy one mic, you can only buy two. What's the brand called? UPI. You're robbing bastards. <laughs> just let me buy one mic for fuck's sake. Because I don't need free. Oh my God, we might get to the top set at some point today. Well, John, one of them dirty little 15s. No, we'll just do a 10 to 5, we spoke about this. Like <laughs> <laughs> just look at this floor. Completely transforms the gym and the YouTube videos. I just want to sleep on it. I just want to deadlift on it and sleep on it. Really good. Three. Really good. Four. Yes. I'm actually thinking about doing the disability class. If I keep getting told that I've been marked down for a pec tear, then... I think I should be allowed to do disability, you know what I'm saying? It was a horrific misfiguring injury that's left me getting penalised in bodybuilding competitions. And it's mixed gender as well. How crazy is that? You're definitely <coughs> mentally disabled, so can you do it? Put my balls on your forehead. You're going to put your balls on my forehead? <laughs> I don't need your natural balls on my forehead. <laughs> if they were fuller... Oh, in fact, I suppose you've got natural test in it. <laughs> my balls aren't my balls aren't got any natural test in them. <laughs> I think you will get six on this, but what I would do is I would leave it at the six, knowing that you've got some reps in reserve. May, may, maybe have a go at seventy, or just plan that next week. You know, if you do the same kind of build up. You know, you're aiming for 70 next week, or 75. Don't ever be scared to put a, one of them little gear weights on from top. Right, so tuck your legs back a little bit, so you've got a nice solid base. Nice strong grip, so you want a good squeeze on the bar. I'll give you a lift off. Yeah, you got the weight, nice and controlled. One, good. Two, good. Three, good. Four. Come on, keep it nice and strict, keep it tight on line. Yeah, right, this is the one. Control, drive up, 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 all you. Very, very good set. Really good set. That's, that's actually not a bad bench, like, that's okay. I remember, like, when I first managed to do 60 when I was, like, 13, 14. <laughs> No, to be fair, I remember not being able to put a 20 on either side of a bar when I joined a gym, which were like, I'd been training for a couple of years at home and then a couple of years at a gym, so that's good. It's a good press, that. So if we do a bit of a back off for you now, we'll go down to a play, uh, sorry, bar and a 10 in like higher, higher rep. Get some muscle, muscle burnt. Good. 
four, five, good. 20, right, one more full one. Good, perfect set. Do this in your sleep. I do it in my sleep all the time. Yeah, what kind of idiot dreams about benching three plates? It's so attainable. <laughs> what, <laughs> failed 60. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, not bad. What is this music? Oh, that's a bit better. That got better. It sounded like a fairground attraction. <coughs> yeah, scream if you want to go faster. All hands inside the road. <laughs> Full one, yeah? <clears throat> and that's flat bench. See, no one got injured. That's a win. No one got injured apart from Lyndon pulling 100 kilo off my neck. Yeah, finger that mouth. <laughs> Did you ever watch Bo Selector? God, I think Bo Selector's cancelled now. As in, I don't think yeah. it's allowed to exist at all. But fucking hell. So funny. Yeah, I would go. 12. I mean, it's not like I'm a fucking PTR, right? <laughs> we'll laugh right yeah, obviously. Obviously, <laughs> Everything I do makes sense. Good, one. Two, three, really good. We're going all the way to 22.5. Why are you doing so many reps? Stop doing loads of reps. Big six, easy. 22's incoming. Oh my god, perfect spot. <laughs> you legend. Just floated in at last minute and went, I can be your hero, baby. I can be your hero, baby. I don't give a fuck about feelings, unless it's a member. And I care about all my members. Control, drive fast too. There we go, control it down, breathe in, drive fast. There we go. Easy, good this week, good. See, I think there's definitely potential that doing too much on your build-up sets previously has been fatiguing you for your top sets, which some people don't like the concept of saving reps. However, I think in the interest of building strength, especially on a compound, it's good to do that. And again, like when we're saying five to six reps, if you get to five and you're like easy, you do another set, like, Stop that set where it is, a little bit heavier, and do another five or a six, and, but you'll, you'll get more of an idea for that week by week as you just keep going. I, I would maybe lean towards a lot more drop sets in more of a prep fat loss phase. Because there's like a, a common thing that people do that sometimes stops progress is they literally do too much. One of the benefits to like a heavy top set and a back off set. Let me start with mid set. Is it like, <laughs> It almost makes, like if you're warming up with 40, it feels heavy. Then you do your top set and you go back to a back off set with 40 and you're like, oh my God, yeah. so light. I, li I like Sam Sulek, I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan of Sam Sulek. I sometimes consider myself Sam Drulek. <laughs> do a pose for the camera. It's my dad right there. 64 but feel 22. BMO gym, that's what we do. Because, because I'm wanting to do incline fly um, and Lyndon's got pec deck on his uh, plan, we're gonna do a bit of a compromise. And basically the way that you do that on a pec deck is if you drop the seat down a little bit so your hands are a little bit higher and tuck yourself back into the seat, you can almost create a bit of an incline. You can do the opposite where you pop the seat really high and sit forward and you can almost create a bit of a decline. It's a very isolated exercise so like I said, hands quite high, tuck back, squeeze the upper. So when on an exercise like this, we really want to focus on the squeeze because it's isolated. There we go. So control, stretch, drive, squeeze the chest, that's it. So think about that chest squeezing. Squeeze, nice. You don't have to think, oh, it's not doing anything. You can see that it's doing something because you can see the muscle working, whereas sometimes a bit early on, it's maybe hard to, to get that. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely, a, a good point on chest is definitely 
think more about your elbows and your biceps instead of your hands. Yeah. Good. So I'd probably just go chest up a little bit more. Head up, chest up, there we go. And a li little bit of a hold at the top. Nice and controlled, there we go. There's not much to biceps. Biceps are responsible for flexion and extension at the elbow. Bicep curl to failure, hammer curl to failure. It's about it, maybe like an open, open chest, high bicep curl. But at the end of the day, flexion and extension at the elbow, bicep and tricep are the same. Have a little pump check, see what's, see what's going on here. Oh shit, that's a, that's a new line right there. Oh my God, it's fucking, wow, look at me. Oh my God, this is burning. Student has become the master. Hitting them forearms from the back. <laughs> Motorbike. <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> Rev them forearms up. No curling in the squat rack. Uh, we, we let people curl in the squat rack. Because we've got two squat racks. So we're just finishing biceps with a bit of forearms. And <clears throat> we've mentioned there's a couple of body parts where Although a lot of people do want big forearms, I quite like the look of big forearms. It's not 100% it's not for hypertrophy and strength. I, I personally had some elbow issues a year or two ago and I see a lot of people with elbow issues and what it can be from is developing biceps and triceps without developing grip or forearms. So we're just finishing with a reverse curl and I just put a little bit of a reverse curl on the wrist as well. Then into 10 wrist curls and then 10 grippers. We've also just been saying we're probably gonna get some captains of crush grippers. Call this one the downhill ski curl. <laughs> <laughs> the aerodynamic forearm curl. I'm so classic! The end. <laughs>